Hi, this is Alex from Minute Earth, and this is the so-called hockey stick graph. You've probably seen it before, because Earth's temperature has risen so fast over the last few decades that it kind of looks like a hockey stick. Except, a hockey stick is also a graph of the amount of plastic we make each year, and the number of extinctions we're causing, and the amount of fertilizer we put in our oceans, and the amount of fish we catch, and how many people there are on Earth, and how much energy we use. There are hockey stick graphs everywhere. We could probably even make one about the number of hockey sticks. That's because we're experiencing the Great Acceleration, a rapid and world-changing increase in the intensity and scale at which humans do nearly everything. For most humans throughout history, meaning the cumulative hundred billion or so people who existed along the flat part of the stick, not much changed from year to year or even century to century. If someone went to bed in the year 1020 and slept for 200 years, they'd wake up in a world with slightly more people, living lives just as long, or as short, and with each person still using mostly wood for heat and animals for power. In other words, humans still weren't that big of a deal. But if someone went to bed in 1820 and slept for 200 years, that is, until today, they'd wake up in a world with seven times as many people who live two and a half times as long and who use weird and climate-changing fuels to power their homes and run their mechanical industries. In today's world, humans are a planetary-scale force. This great acceleration, the curve in the hockey stick, happened largely because since the 1800s, we've been unleashing the incredible energy contained in fossil fuels like never before. Initially, fossil fuels powered growth mostly in North America and Europe, but the big, planet-changing, worldwide Great Acceleration didn't happen until after World War II and independence movements in Africa and Asia, when people worldwide gained more access to these fuels, as well as to new farming technology and public health breakthroughs. As a result, our world today, and our influence on the world, is vastly different not only from 1950 and 1820, 1220, and 1020, it's vastly different from the world as it was experienced by the vast majority of humans over the vast majority of human existence. And because the world has gotten so different so quickly, if someone fell asleep today and woke up in 200 years, there's really no telling what they'd find. This video was sponsored by the University of Minnesota, where students, faculty, and staff across all fields of study are working to solve the grand challenges facing society. And it turns out that pretty much all of the challenges are wrapped up in the Great Acceleration. Assuring clean water and sustainable ecosystems, fostering just and equitable communities, advancing health through tailored solutions, enhancing individual and community capacity for a changing world, and feeding the world sustainably. In addition to researching these grand challenges, the university also teaches about them, like through the course Living the Good Life at the End of the World, where Institute on the Environment director Jessica Hellman and English professor Dan Philippon help students consider what it means to live a good life in this moment of rapid change. Thanks University of Minnesota, 